There are five buildings that are currently in service in Battery Park City that utilize this technology. And they're various sizes. They can range from about 14,000 gallons a day up to the largest will be 40,000 gallons a day. Uh, the newest site that we're working on is just down the street across uh, right near the World Trade Center site. And that will be a series of two buildings plus part of the Battery Park City Authority will have a uh, component as well. And that will utilize the, again, very similar technology, but it will be the, the, f the last of uh, the planned buildings within Battery Park. In this particular area, Battery Park City uh, required very green building techniques and the water reuse component was, was one aspect of that. What Battery Park City encouraged was that people look at reuse and this particular membrane technology is a proven technology. It's been in place again since the early uh, early 80s. Applied Water Management was actually involved in many commercial applications of this technology in, in, in the tri-state area. The water savings as a result of these uh, recycling systems can be upwards of 50 percent. Uh, some instances where we've got as high as 65 percent. And what that means is that the, the residents are actually reducing their potable water bills by a tremendous amount. And um, the total amount of flow that we have recycled is on the order of 10, 10 million gallons a year. So it does add up and it does uh, make for a very green and very uh, environmentally friendly building. This, this controls everything that you see here. So you have a plant overview which tells you what's the level in a water storage tank, what's the level in the membrane tank, what kind of pH do you have, your turbidity. You go back to the main screen here. You can turn your pumps on and off, it tells you what kind of valves are open. The first process that the water goes through is a building sewer interceptor. And that's, uh, that interceptor runs through what's known as a feed tank. And that feed tank essentially fluctuates and supplies the water to the system. From that feed tank, we have a series of pumps that pump then through subsequent processes, which include uh, nitrogen removal and BOD removal. And then the last and the most important step is the membrane filtration process, where we actually have a physical membrane barrier that we pull clean water through and then we leave the solids behind. Uh, after that, there is a series of disinfection processes including ozone and ultraviolet disinfection. Uh, we have that water storage tank, a series of pumps that then pump up into the toilets and also into the um, into the cooling tower system. Where we uh, remove the pollutants and what, what happens is the, the bugs in the, in the sewage thrive on the air that's in this tank. The organisms are actually doing all the work. Basic treatment process is a biological treatment treatment process that's been around for, for a very, very long time. Uh, I would say probably in the early 1900s this, this type of technology was, uh, was in place. However, the key differentiating technology at this point is the membrane separation. And those membranes were introduced to the market, I would think, in the, the late 70s, early 80s, they started gaining a lot more prominence. Uh, over the years, they've in over the years, they've actually uh, become much more common in wastewater treatment processes, and as a result of that, the price point has actually gone down. They become much more commonplace. So you see a lot of this membrane technology throughout different uh, industries, particularly uh, in systems like this, where you need very high quality water. The membranes are probably the most, uh, most effective process. Each community is different. Every building is different. Uh, it all hinges on how much money the developer has budgeted for their particular project. Uh, economies of scale will generally help the larger the project, the more economic, um, economically easier it is to move a system like this into, into the project. And the unique aspect of New York City is that they actually incentivize the building owners with a 25% reduction in their water, potable water rates. There's also other intangible benefits such as reduced so, uh, sanitary sewer and combined sewer overflows, uh, reduced nutrient uh, loadings to the, to the city-owned systems, and there's also an infrastructure component that the city is now, it doesn't need to build additional infrastructure to support these buildings. So in an overall planning sense, these buildings are on the forefront of what we see as far as capital infrastructure in other parts of, uh, other parts of the country.